Today I'm framing three of my favorite watercolor paintings using an easy float mounting technique. I've never done this before. I actually have a confession. I haven't properly framed any of my paintings. Some of them are studies or tutorials not worth framing, but some of them I really love and I want to display them in my home. The problem is watercolor paper sizes don't match up with off-the-shelf frame sizes. Many of my favorite paintings are 7 by 10 inches because I cut 10 by 14 inch watercolor paper in half. A standard frame or mat opening is 8 by 10 inches. The next size down is 5 by 7 inches, which crops out way too much of the painting. I could get custom frames, but I have a lot of paintings I want to frame. I'm not selling my paintings, I just want to frame them for myself or to give to friends and family. So I want to find a DIY solution to frame my odd-sized paintings. Let me show you what I came up with. My plan is to float mount the paintings. Float mounting is where the art goes on top of the mat board instead of behind a window cut out of the mat. It's a more contemporary look with the art casting a shadow on the mat, which makes it look like it's floating. You can enhance the floating effect by raising the art off the mat with foam core or another piece of mat board. The only thing that makes float mounting tricky is you need enough depth in the frame to prevent the art from touching the glass. You need more of a shadow box style frame. I figured out a few tricks and tools to make float mounting possible in a standard frame that's about one inch deep. But before we get to that, I need to remove these borders and sign these paintings to get them ready for framing. I already flattened these paintings. My favorite way to do that is to mist the back with water and then sandwich the painting between clean pieces of paper and lay a stack of heavy books on top. I leave the painting to dry under the books for two to three days. Now I've signed my paintings and I'm ready to mount and frame them. I like the raised look, so I cut a piece of foam board that is a half inch smaller than my painting on all sides. It's important to make sure you get acid-free or archival foam board since it will be in contact with the painting. I applied acid-free double-sided tape to the back of the foam core. Because the tape is so sticky and permanent, I like to peel up the backing strip just at the corners first. Then I measure and position the foam core before peeling the rest of the strip off of the tape. To mount the artwork to the foam core, I'm using acid-free linen hinging tape to make T hinges. I put two pieces sticky side up at the top of the foam core. Across the top of those pieces, I place two more strips horizontally sticky side down. I used a spoon to apply pressure to activate the adhesive and attach the top strips to the foam core. The piece of art will stick to the bottom strips which are sticky side up. Then I used my quilting ruler to center the art on top of the foam core. I used a second ruler to double check my measurements before pressing the art onto the linen tape. I put a clean piece of paper over the art and use the back of the spoon to apply pressure over the tape. Now the art is hinged on top of the foam core. The bottom hangs free. This will allow the paper to expand and contract without buckling. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. 
To create the shadow box effect for the frame, I cut strips of mat board to create spacers. I cut three strips for each side of the frame. I cut a small amount off of the longer strips so they'd fit between the top and bottom strips inside the frame. It's like making a frame within a frame. I used acid-free double-sided tape to attach the strips together. I made my strips about 7 sixteenths of an inch wide, which gives enough space for the quarter inch foam core and the art, while still leaving a small gap between the art and the glass. The spacers fit in the frame like this. The mat board will sit on top of these spacers and keep the art from touching the glass. Because I needed more depth inside the frame, the original frame backing won't work. It's designed to fit into a groove inside the frame that I've covered with mat board. So I added a second piece of mat board to act as a backing board. Then I got to use my new tool. It looks like a stapler, but it's not a stapler. It's called a point driver. It shoots these small metal points into the sides of the frame to hold the backing in place. The points are flexible so you can bend them up and remove or change the artwork later if you want. They do sell points that you can install manually with a screwdriver and a hammer, but this tool makes the job so much easier and faster. I was happy to invest in this tool so I can do my own framing. I spent about $125 total for the three frames and the supplies that I needed for this project, but I could have easily spent more than that on custom framing just one of these art pieces. Now I have extra mats, hinging tape, and the point driver for future framing projects. These turned out so much better than I even imagined. I love the float mounted look. I think this is a great way to frame art for myself or to give to friends and family. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.